Good morning, everyone, and welcome to STEM Labs Unprocessed. I want to reintroduce myself. My name is Annalise Roy, and I'm a scientist here at STEM Labs. As previously mentioned, part of STEM Labs' mission is to better inform patients, physicians, and the community as a whole on hot topics within the regenerative medicine industry. Today, we're going to discuss MMPs and TIMPs. These are two protein types that are widely discussed in conversations around wound healing. MMPs are often portrayed as negative components that break down tissue matrix and prevent the healing process. TIMPs, which inactivate MMPs, are too often left out of the conversation of wound healing. Today, I'm going to walk you through the roles of these proteins and debunk any of these misconceptions. What you see here are the molecular structures of MMPs and TIMPs. I like to think of MMPs as little Pac-Men that chew up the matrix, and the TIMPs as a plug that prevents the Pac-Men from overeating. Before we dive into the roles of MMPs and TIMPs, let's talk about where they're working. MMPs, TIMPs, and many other proteins interact in the extracellular matrix. We call it the ECM for short. The ECM surrounds and supports all of your cells and tissues. It is a complex network of different proteins and carbohydrates that creates a scaffold for your cells. It's constantly broken down and replaced. This keeps your tissue healthy and functional, and it's critical in tissue repair and remodeling. The proteins mainly responsible for this turnover are called MMPs and TIMPs. So, what are TIMPs and MMPs? They are two types of proteins that go hand in hand and often come up in conversations when talking about tissue maintenance and regulation, in particular when we start discussing wound repair and chronic injuries. The proper functioning of each depends on the other and they work together to help create a balanced environment that keeps tissue healthy. To understand TIMPs, let's first take a closer look at MMPs. MMP stands for matrix metalloproteinase. They're a type of enzyme that break down other proteins. More specifically, they are responsible for the regular breakdown of the ECM. Indirectly, this also causes the release of signaling molecules from the matrix. There are currently 23 known human MMPs, and each one specializes in the breakdown of different ECM molecules. For example, some MMPs are collagenases. These are going to be enzymes that break down collagens. Another category of MMP are the hyaluronidases, which are a type of enzyme that break down hyaluronic acid. But what do they have to do with tissue repair in wounds? In the wound repair process, MMPs are used to clear out the matrix that has been damaged by injury, kind of like when a doctor debrides a wound. In the later stages of wound repair, MMPs begin to degrade existing capillary walls, prepping them for new growth. This allows new blood vessels to form and helps bring oxygen and nutrients to the new tissue. In the final stages of wound repair, MMPs aid in the reorganization of new tissue matrix. The function of MMPs is also important to wound healing because MMPs control the timed release of signaling proteins from the ECM. Many of these protein signals are stored in the ECM and can only be released and activated by MMPs breaking down the matrix. In this way, MMPs impact wound repair. But, like all other proteins, too much of a good thing can start to cause damage, so TIMPs exist to keep the MMP concentrations in check. TIMP stands for Tissue Inhibitors of Metalloproteinases, and as the name suggests, TIMPs inhibit MMP activity. So far, there are only four known TIMPs, and all four have been identified in humans. In healthy tissue, there's a dynamic balance of MMPs and TIMPs. Remember, MMPs break down the ECM. TIMPs will inactivate MMPs and prevent them from breaking down too much ECM. This is why TIMPs are responsible for regulating extracellular matrix turnover. They prevent the MMPs from chewing up too much of the tissue matrix. This is how they directly impact ECM turnover and what we consider the traditional role of TIMPs. In this traditional role, TIMPs are crucial to normal tissue repair by helping to regulate inflammation, angiogenesis, tissue remodeling, and scar tissue formation. TIMPs will minimize the breakdown of new ECM in wound beds, which helps to prevent excessive inflammation. 
Timps also play a role in regulating fibrosis. Fibrosis is the formation of scar tissue, which is caused by the new ECM in a wound bed being made too quickly. The proper balance of TIMP MMP concentrations prevents the rampant buildup of ECM, minimizing scar tissue. These are just a few ways that TIMPs directly impact ECM turnover and tissue repair. But what about the indirect effects of TIMPs and MMPs? As TIMPs and MMPs orchestrate the controlled breakdown of ECM, proteins like growth factors that are bound to the ECM are released into the cellular environment. Think of this like balloons tethered to a weight. The growth factors are tethered to ECM proteins. When MMPs release growth factors from the matrix, it's like scissors cutting the string on a balloon. The proteins that are released are now able to signal processes in each stage of wound repair. These signals will initiate the migration and duplication of cells, the immune response, inflammatory reactions, and ultimately, tissue repair. What else do MMPs and TIMPs do? The interaction between the two can also act to regulate or recycle signaling proteins like growth factors and cytokines. Apart from breaking down extracellular matrix, MMPs are also capable of directly activating inactive proteins, influencing their signaling capabilities. And if that's not enough, MMPs can bind to and destroy growth factors. That's just another reason TIMPs are important in regulating MMP activity. The balance of these molecules acts as a signal, but how? Cells can sense the state of the environment around them. The ratio of TIMPs and MMPs communicates to cells what the state of their environment is. When TIMPs and MMPs are correctly balanced, it signals to cells that everything is as it should be. But when the TIMP-MMP axis is unbalanced, it can signal to cells that the tissue environment is damaged. This initiates a signal cascade, much like the fall of dominoes. The signal of one protein sets off the next and then the next, creating a domino effect that can lead to a cellular response in the environment, such as inflammation and an immune response. So TIMPs and MMPs don't just impact the level of ECM proteins, like collagen, they indirectly impact the levels of signaling proteins, including cytokines and growth factors. So when TIMPs don't properly regulate MMPs, there's too much ECM breakdown and not enough new ECM being made. This means that over time, the ECM is going to weaken and it won't provide the structural support that your tissue needs. The body cannot create enough new tissue to keep up with the tissue that's being broken down by the unregulated MMPs. This is what contributes to chronic injuries. One hallmark of chronic wounds, including venous leg ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, and many types of inflammatory joint conditions, is an overabundance of MMPs and too few TIMPs. This is nicely demonstrated by a Bulin et al. study. This study investigates the levels of MMPs and TIMPs in healthy and chronic wounds. In healthy wounds, tissue repair starts with higher levels of MMPs and lower levels of TIMPs as MMPs help to clear the wound of damaged tissue. Then, during the inflammatory stage, after about 24 hours, the levels of TIMPs spike and the ratio of TIMPs to MMPs will level out, returning to the natural balance required for maintenance and sustainable healing. But in chronic wounds, MMP levels are significantly higher than in healthy wounds. These levels remain elevated, preventing the proper process of tissue repair. Conversely, TIMP expression is much lower. This imbalance will cause the wound healing process to stall. Levels of MMPs have been suggested as a predictor or an indicator of chronic wounds and poor healing, such as instances of pressure ulcers and DFUs. To kickstart the healing process in chronic wounds and return them to a typical healing pathway, this imbalance must be rectified. Many therapeutic options for chronic wounds center their treatment philosophy around the application of growth factors to stimulate cell growth. However, many researchers have expressed their concern with a growth factor-only treatment plan. They will state that growth factor treatments will probably only be effective if accompanied by components that will regulate MMPs, components like TIMPs. This has been a quick overview of what we know about MMPs and TIMPs. Let's take a quick second to highlight some key takeaways. 
MMPs are enzymes that break down extracellular matrix and play a critical role in the initial stages of wound repair. TIMPs inhibit MMP function and are the proteins responsible for regulating the activities of MMPs in tissue. TIMPs are also critical for the correct orchestration of the inflammatory stage of wound healing, the creation of new blood vessels, and the remodeling of new extracellular matrix to minimize scar tissue formation. An overexpression of MMPs and too few TIMPs contributes to chronic wounds. The most critical thing to remember is that MMPs and TIMPs must exist in a balance and are both required for the maintenance of healthy tissue. I hope this was helpful and gave you some new insights into this topic. If you're interested in learning more about the importance of balance in the body or special topics like hyaluronic acid, head over to our blog to learn more, www.stimlabs.com forward slash blog, and be on the lookout for our next blog post.